Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to have a look at this semi-replica of Newton's telescope. A couple of things that are different about this. First of all, it seems too small, doesn't it? Newton's original was actually not much bigger. It would have been about so tall. It's in brass. I like to do things in brass. And what's with this weird thing? What's the counterweight all about? Stay tuned and you'll see. I enjoy making replica telescopes. You might call them model telescopes. These are all, I like them to be fully functional telescopes, at least in a minimal sense. So they're working telescopes, uh, but they're meant mostly to celebrate the originals yeah, at some scale. This is what originally inspired me to make this little replica, or semi-replica. This is a kit put out by Hasbro, probably in the 60s or 70s toy. Um, it says, Newton's Telescope, Authentic Working Replica. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, uh, hmm, maybe that would be a fun one to make. I'll make it in brass, because I love to work with metal, so I'll make it in brass. And that was, this was the inspiration, and I thought, I, I'm not proud. I'll be happy to use the optics from this thing if they'll work. Let me show you. Inside here is a little mirror, and it's not even where, very well coated. And it looks like it's it's probably almost certainly made of plastic, some sort of a pressed plastic with an aluminized coating. Um, and I tried it, and it sort of works. I'm not proud. This is just a you know, it's just a a stationary model. It's not meant to be used in any, in any real sense. So I thought, oh, that'll be fine. I'll make that. I'll put that together and make it in brass and it'll be very nice. And then I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should try to make this out of metal. It can't be too much worse than this. How hard could it be to make a an aluminum mirror that would look something like that? So this is the mirror I made. It's made out of a, just a chunk of aluminum. The reason for all the paint on there is just to mask out a turned edge and the center is pretty bad too, which doesn't matter at all. I've got a whole video about this. I'd encourage you to check the links in the description and, and take a look at it. Let me take this OTA apart and I'll show you what's inside here. First of all, like Newton's telescope, mine is in two parts, really, although it's different. In Newton's telescope, this rear section would rotate. In mine, that section doesn't rotate, but the mirror itself rotates inside. You can see what's going on in there. So the mirror is moving back and forth to focus the telescope. In order to make that work, I had to have a kind of a coupling device here. This is more or less a trap nut, and the nut is free to move around a little bit like so, but it still stays in place enough to, to make the mirror turn inside the cylinder, kind of like a piston in the cylinder. So that's what's going on with that whole structure there. Okay, so there's the mount. This is actually two separate cylinders, very much like a Newton's. And here's the mirror inside there. And it's just attached to the back there. And that back coupling device, see it's got a kind of a coupling device, uh, kind of a fork kind of a deal. It goes on there. That traps that and means that when you turn this then the mirror has to move forward and back. So that's what that's about. The eyepiece of course comes out. I've just got some tape on there to hold it in by friction. And there's a little secondary on a stock. The stock is just a a screw that's in there and uh, I 
bent it to it to collimate the whole thing. Very fancy, very high tech. This is my first version of the scope with these two brass support things. I want you to notice that it probably looks pretty close to the original. Of course, it's in brass. But um, this, these things have almost no... They put almost no force on the ball. And they provide very little in the way of uh, friction. There's a little... Whoa, a little bit there but it's just not enough to hold the ball and this is brass so you're not going to be able to get too much out of that so I decided that probably wasn't the right way to go my next iteration involved taking this completely apart so now it's a completely static mount But at least it will look something like the real thing. Not very happy with that. I don't like the idea of it being a static mount. So... For my next iteration, I built some nice sturdy little arms, like so. And they've got some um, fingers, I suppose you would call them, whatever you want to call those. Anyhow, those are much sturdier. Okay, as you can see, this is a little bit better, but still not adequate. So this solution will work. My next iteration of this mount ended up being a couple of spring-loaded arms. You can see there's some pretty, pretty tough little springs in there, and I put some pressure on there. Now you can put the mount on, put the ball on. This has quite a bit more pressure, but this whole thing up here. Being brass, this weighs a pound, which for this size is, uh, you know, it's a pretty heavy duty little thing. It just, no matter how much I tighten those, doesn't have enough tension. So that's why I ended up going with a counterweight. It's beautiful. It works superbly. I can always opt to go back to a number of different possible static display options all these parts so I can do that but I think I prefer this one as my final result let me show you how this scope works this scope is on a ball mount you can see that it's just about infinitely flexible you can put this scope any place you want it. you can look at anything in the sky This is made of 100% uh, brass, minor exceptions would be of course the eyepiece, uh, the secondary mirror, and the primary mirror. All of my telescope models involve some compromise, uh, partly because I want them to be working telescopes. This model of the Hale 200 inch here is a working model of the Hale 200 inch. It has some slightly different features though, that great big eyepiece there, and this is uh, not correct, uh, not perfect uh, replication of the original telescope. This model of the Yerkes 40 inch Alvin Clark refractor, it has, it has an eyepiece, that's because this is a real telescope, it works, it's not a great telescope, but it works. So um, the eyepiece is completely wrong. Look at this 
this thing, this projection coming out of the back of the Hubble Space Telescope, um, clearly a compromise so that the thing will actually work, and yet there's a, a resemblance to the original. They're also all in metal, and I like polished metal, as you can tell. So the sacrifice of making this with a counterweight, I think is worthwhile. It's just fine. Fits in with my philosophy. This is a working telescope, as a matter of fact. It's got the advantage that I actually made the optic in this telescope. I made the mirror. So uh, it's got some features that make it an even better replica than some of the other ones. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this semi-replica of Isaac Newton's first telescope. Thank you for watching.